Hi, St. Timothy family. My name is Madeline Gonzalez. And I'm her brother, Logan. And, and here are your announcements. Great news. Our Faith Formation Open House is this weekend after the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Masses, which means it's time to register for the upcoming Faith Formation year. We have programs for all ages from the little ones in preschool all the way to high school teens like me. You can also register for a vacation Bible school. This year's theme is scuba. Visit our Faith Formation team out in the courtyard after the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Masses to tour our classrooms, meet our teachers and program directors, and register for a program. Join us for Catholicism 101 every Sunday in the hall at 10.15 a.m. as we explore the teachings and traditions of the Catholic faith. Our topic this weekend is how to share your faith with others. If you are interested in becoming Catholic or receiving your other sacraments, please join us for inquiry on the first and third Sundays of every month at 10.50 a.m. in the front office. Mother's Day weekend is coming up. If you would like to celebrate your mother at Mass on Mother's Day weekend, send us a photo of your mom to include her in our pre-Mass slides by Sunday, May 5th. Please see the bulletin for details and how to submit your photo. Speaking of Mother's Day, you can remember your mom, both living or deceased, in our Mother's Day Novena, beginning Sunday, May 12th. Pick up and complete a Novena card in the front office before Wednesday, May 8th. And lastly, our next Revival Night is on Wednesday, May 1st at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss this night of praise and worship, Eucharistic adoration, and an inspirational message from our very own Father Patrick Moses. And now, a short message from Grand Knight Joe Bailey. Hi, St. Tim's. I'm the head of the Knights of Columbus, Joe Bailey. I'm joined by my good friend, Nikki Yap, and we stand before you with hearts full of hope and a mission of mercy. This weekend is our annual Intellectual Disability Drive, a cherished St. Timothy's Knights of Columbus tradition. For those who may be new to our community, the ID Drive is not just a fundraising event, but a heartfelt effort to uplift and support individuals with intellectual disabilities within our community. It's a beacon of hope, funding activities that bring joy, supporting facilities that offer care, and providing precious time off for families who give tirelessly of themselves. Every penny collected goes directly to the ID community. Hello, my name is Nikki, and I want to say thank you. Because of your kindness and the ID drive, I've made new friends and learned new things. Your support allows me and my friends to enjoy life's special moments. Thank you for making us feel loved and supported. Thank you, Nikki. The Knights will be in the courtyard after all masses this weekend, wearing their yellow vest to collect donations for this noble cause. Your support makes a world of difference. Together, we can ensure that the ID Drive continues to be a beacon of hope a source of joy, and a testament of boundless generosity of our parish. Thank you for your kindness and unwavering support, and may God bless you, our parish, and all those who strive through our intellectual disability drives. That's all for the announcements. God bless. Good morning, and welcome to St. Timothy Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Kindly silence your cell phones so that all might worship without distraction. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Francis. And we invite you to join us as we sing, Come Worship the Lord.
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Today is uh, Good Shepherd Sunday in the old, why, why do they call it a Good Shepherd, you know? It's a road shepherd, you know, you are mother, your father, but, but we never say a, a, a good father or a good mother, you know, but it's a Good Shepherd. Well, because Jesus, as a Good Shepherd, did extraordinary thing, more than just a shepherd. Compassion, lay down his life for the sheep. But today's standard is a little bit different. You have to learn how to be a good sheep instead of focusing on the good shepherd. I think Monsignor John Urell told me he heard uh, uh, a homily about uh, the shepherd eats the sheep if you don't feed him well, you know. So, so and you too, you know, you reflect when you have a when you have good children, reflects that you are good parents. So if we have good sheep, then we reflect that we have good shepherd, like the bishop, you know, if you behave well, then oh, we have a good shepherd. So besides focusing on good shepherd, you have to focus also on how to be a good sheep, you know, listening to the shepherd. So let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery of love by asking God mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to receive for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
Kollegen. Almighty ever living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Sing down, down upon your children, that they may hear your word, hear your word with gladness. Lord, send your blessing down, down upon your children, that they may hear your word, hear your word with gladness. of the apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, <coughs> then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone there is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven <clears throat> given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Bye. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, We are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. According to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Father Francis reminded me in the back that uh, I'm preaching today, and he said, don't make it bad. I got a confession for that one. <laughs> no, my wife said that. Just kidding. So today is, is, I have a lot of favorite gospels, and every once in a while you hear me say, this is my favorite gospel. But seriously, this one's one of my favorite gospels. And it talks about just the strength and commitment that Jesus has to us. You know, Jesus presents himself as the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And he contrasts himself with people who are hired uh, and who flees in the face of danger, emphasizing the depth of his commitment to his love for the flock. I've always, I was always been taught that there's three types. There's the sheep, there is the wolf, and then there is the uh, sheepdog. So the sheep is part of the flock, and the wolf is trying to attack all the time, and then the sheepdog protects the flock. Well, I'm a sheepdog. I, I protect the flock. And we have a saying that the sheep pretend that the wolf's never there. The wolf plans on coming, and the sheepdog prays for the day that wolf shows up. So I pray for that. I can't wait, you know. But I look back in my life, and in Jesus, that he gives his example of the good shepherd, he knows his sheep intimately. He knows us by name. He calls us by name. And he is willing to lay down that life for you. This image of sacrificial love is at the heart of the gospel message today. It's a love that's unconditional, selfish, and unwavering. So I want to do a little experiment right now. So I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And I want you to think about that good shepherd in your life. Think about that person who gave you that unconditional, selfish and unwavering love. Think about that person in your life who is your mentor, that person in your life who showed you the ropes, that person in the life who would lay down their life for you. This could be a mother, it could be an uncle, it could be a brother, a sister, grandparent, a teacher, close friend, fellow soldier, Marine, sailor, airman, police officer, firefighter. Would this person lay down his life for you? Can you see their face? Can you hear their voice? Can you see the face of Christ? For me, mine is my dad, Jose Francisco Morales. They used to call him Tortilla Frank. <clears throat> My dad used to sell tortillas. He slung tortillas in the neighborhood. His love for us was unconditional. His commitment to our family life and to his kids echoes the Good Shepherd's love. Like the Good Shepherd, my dad knew us intimately. He knows our strengths and our weakness, our joys and our sorrows. And they have walked us through some of the value, valleys and mountaintops, offering guidance, support, and commitment and encouragement along the, along the way. Think about it for a moment of your own shepherd that I had you think about. Think about their sacrifices, dedication, their unwavering love. Perhaps they worked long hours to provide for your family, gave you long hours for tutoring, spent time with you, mentoring you. Or maybe they offered a listening ear or comfortable embrace when you need it most. Whenever, whatever form of love they have taken, there was no denying that profound impact they had in your life. 
My dad's love for us was his commitment to providing for the family. Like I said, he sold tortillas. He started off selling door to door and he ended up owning a tortilla company, which was a great testament from it. He was a young man. He was 19 years old when I was born. And then right after that, 10 months later, my Irish twin, my sister was born. And then a couple months after that, well, obviously biologically more than the nine, was my other sister was born. And then seven years later, my other brother was born. And uh, so they were a good Catholic family with no TV or radio at home. So, but my dad made that commitment to provide for his family. He was a frugal man. My dad was very frugal. He grew up uh, in some of the projects in Los Angeles and did what he can to get out. He went to Salesian High School and uh, I went to Bosco Tech, so I'm a Salesian legacy. So my dad taught me the good um, importance of education. But his frugality was something we made fun of. We went to a Dodger game. My brother and I went to a Dodger game, and my brother was probably about seven years old. And he says, Dad, I want a Dodger dog. And my dad looked at him and says, yeah, you can't eat a Dodger dog by yourself. So I said, I want a Dodger dog too. So my dad says, I'm getting one Dodger dog. So he bought one Dodger dog, put mustard and ketchup and relish on it, and he took it out of the package, and he tried to cut it. And when he cut it, he pinched it, and the hot dog shot out both sides <laughs> of the thing and hit the ground. And he giggled. <laughs> so he ended up going back and buying three more hot dogs, one for him, one for my brother, and one for me. And that story resonated with us because he, we were building a fence, and he would try to shortcut stuff. And I said, Dad, remember the hot dog? <laughs> OK, then we do it the right way, right? My dad was a very, very charitable man. He helped as many people as he can in the neighborhood. He helped any, many people who, who, who needed that help. Um, one of the biggest signs of charity he had is when I made the decision to go in the military, he was really, really upset, really upset. My dad grew up in the Vietnam era, lost a lot of friends. I remember him opening up his yearbook and showing me in circles of his friends who did not come back from Vietnam. So he was, and, and his, his disappointment was not that he didn't want me to do it. He was just fearful for me. But his disappointment, he didn't talk to me for about two months before I left to the military. And uh, I wrote him letters and everything and basic training. And uh, when I graduated basic training, the commander came up to me and said, Morales, and I stood at attention, someone here to see you. And at first I thought it was the sheriff. And uh, he moved out of the way and it was my dad standing there. My dad standing there and he was crying. He said, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. At that point, I knew that he would lay down his life for you. After that, my dad was there to pin on some of my accoutrements, my ranger tab, some of my wings and stuff like that. So God bless him for do that. But our fathers and our mentors and our shepherds can't be perfect, but they strive to emulate the example of the good shepherd in our own lives. They protect us from harm, they guide us on the path of righteousness, and they lay down their lives for us in countless ways, big or small. Earlier, I asked you to think about that person who was your shepherd. Think about them. Keep them in your mind and in your heart. As we reflect on them today, let us embrace that legacy of love that they have passed down to us. Let us be grateful for their sacrifices, their wisdom, and their unwavering support. And let us strive to honor their example by becoming good shepherds ourselves in our own right, loving, serving, and sacrificing for the sake of others. If you feel that you haven't had one or one didn't come to mind, or you couldn't see anybody, you do have one, and his name is Jesus Christ. He told us that he will never leave us. Jesus' words resonate with us as they reveal the sac sacrificial love of his nature, a love that knows no bounds, a love that is willing to give everything for our sake and those of others. His love is found in his words and his deeds and stand reflected around us. Who are our shepherds? As we celebrate our shepherds today and recognize them, let us embrace their legacy to live that life passed down to us. Let us be grateful for their sacrifices, their wisdom, and support for us. Let us strive to honor them. Let us be the good shepherds to others. I want to share a story about a football player. His dad, uh, he was a senior quarterback and he had, uh, in Georgia, 
and he had just won the semifinals. His dad was at every single game, and he was a pillar of support. His dad suffered from diabetes and had lost his sight as a result of this disease uh, right after his son was born. But his dad never, ever missed a game. In his senior year, he led the team to the semifinals, and after that game, his dad had passed away. Surprising to everyone, he dominated that state title game. He set league records, and the team won the first ever high school championship. After the game, a few reporters were around him, and they were asking him, how did you do it? What was going on? And one said, how did you make it look so easy? He responded in a very humble and quiet voice. This is the first time my dad saw me play. May Jesus, the good shepherd who laid down his life for us, continue to guide and bless us as we strive to follow in his footsteps. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Yes, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearly beloved, how great is the love we share as God's children. Placing our confidence in that love, let us bring our prayers to the Father of Jesus and our Father. Let us ask for the salvation that God promises us in the risen Son that those who shepherd the Holy Church of God under persecution will find courage in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. That those baptized at Easter, especially our parishioners, will find lasting joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. That those discerning a vocation to the priesthood, diaconate, or consecrated life will find guidance in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from injury or sickness, sickness will find healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lack sufficient food or adequate housing will find bountiful help in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, Magada, Renit, Renal, Christina, Dempsey, Janet, Ann Laskin, Daniel Dune, Vicki Orr, Otto, Lewayne Miller, and Frank Morales, whose birthday we celebrate today, will find eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal rest of Ramel Garcia, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. And for the intentions of Bill Hunt, Lynn Gastrom, and DJ Banks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. Lord God, in the power of Jesus' name, we stand before you in fervent prayer. Grant us and all your children the salvation Christ won for us by his death and resurrection. Keep us united as his flock and help us follow him to glory. Let us see your face and share your life forever and ever. Amen. And our song is Lead Me Home. Thank you for the cross, thank you for your love, the perfect sacrifice of praise to God above. Thank you for the gift, thank you for the price of losing everything to gain eternal Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all speech. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in this Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exhaust in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and enter willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and his brother bishops, Timothy and Tang Tai, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under the roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Shepherd me, O God. No, I should wonder the 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, hear our protection against all the weakness and fears of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell safety, and all the evil spirits from throughout the world seeking to the souls. Amen. We invite you to join us as we sing, I Will Follow. Follow. 